Hi, I'm Leslie Hill, the Program Director for the Women's Entrepreneurial Opportunity Center. And today I am joined by Kelly Ambrioli, Partner Associate of Wilcox & Associates. So the topic we're going to cover today is a little bit of head trash that revolves around sales, kind of what holds us back, and just some nuances that you can pick up um, while giving some sales tips. So, Kelly, tell us a little bit about Wilcox & Associates and what you do there. First of all, thanks for having me, Leslie. Um, Wilcox & Associates, we are first and foremost a Sandler training um, franchise, but we focus in a few different areas, training, coaching, and consulting. So um, that's what we do. We do it in a few different areas from sales, sales management, and leadership. Um, we also have a new program, too. It's organizational excellence as well. Ooh, fun. I know. <laughs> and I've taken her classes, and really, that's the best knowledge that I've acquired over the last five years, uh, hands down. But you know that already, because I've always... I'm always... I'm your biggest props. cheerleader. <laughs> um, thinking about sales. Okay. And we talk about head trash. Give, talk to me a little bit about why sales is so hard for people. I know that it was really hard for me. Well, um, I think that sales is hard for people for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, the word itself, sales. When you think of salesperson, right, what do you think of? What comes to mind? Somebody that I want to talk to. Why so? Because they're just going to try to not let me get off the phone. Yeah. And I don't have time. Right. So... First of all, we've, we've created this from maybe past experiences or, um, you know, things that we've been told um, through our lifetime that there's these negative connotations with salesperson. So we do all kinds of creative things, right? Like our titles now say business development or account management. Um, the reality of it is, is we're all selling. So the word itself we're afraid of. And then second, what do we have? What are our beliefs to that word? So that's one of the things that get in our way. Another that you mentioned. Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Was head trash. Yes. So what is head trash? I guess I should explain what head trash is. Head trash are the thoughts or beliefs that have no relative. They're not real. But we believe them. We hang on to them. And it makes us behave differently. We hug them. <laughs> yeah, we love them. We nurture them. We grow them. Before, I mean, it starts out this big, and then it goes this big, right? Yes. So. Yes. In one of the classes, I remember you telling us, think back to when it's late 80s, probably up until we all had cell phones, really, but someone would call during dinner and you'd all get quiet as if they could hear you and no one would go answer the phone. And then it turned into you had caller ID and then you would just ignore all the people you didn't know. But if someone were to actually walk up to your door to sell you something door to door, we'd hide Hit the floor. Yeah, we'd, hi- we'd hide. Everybody would like hide. Don't say sure. yeah. They may not know we're here. Yeah, but they're all the messages that we hear all the time, right? So, I mean, if you think about being a kid, right? I, I've done this to my children. You've done it to yours. I know. Oh yeah. I know you personally. We've we've both done it to our kids. Um, we teach our kids not to speak to strangers. Yep. And it's not polite to talk about money. Yeah. And then we grow up and we become professionals. And what do we ask you to do every single day, Leslie? Talk to people I don't know. About what? Money. Yeah. So it becomes really hard. <laughs> so we hang on to those things. It becomes really hard to break those behaviors because they were kind of instilled in us as kids. Um, so that's one of the things that hold us back. But really, it's our beliefs. And when we try not to talk about money, it's more awkward. So if someone's trying to sell to me, it's funny because I turn into a high D so, <laughs> so Kelly also does disc assessments, and I'm a high I and a high C. But when it comes to someone's telling me or trying to sell to me, I automatically am like, just give me the details. Okay, where do you need to be? How much do you cost? I just need to know in my brain so I can understand what the year looks like. And it's, well, uh, uh, well how much do you want to pay me? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. What? Well, that ties back to head trash as well, right? So um, as salespeople, we've really got to be able to separate our identity and our role, right? So my role is a salesperson, but I am Kelly, so I'm awesome even if I don't close this deal. I don't know if you know. I'm pretty (laughs) awesome. Um, 
But I'm also mean if I don't close this deal. And we get so emotionally engaged to it that we, you know, behave differently in our beliefs. And we also believe that I buy the same way you buy, which is totally different. Oh. So we all have, as humans, we all have different buying behaviors. And when it comes to the sale, we kind of get that confused with, if you're my prospect, you've got to buy the same way I buy because that's the only way I know how. So that gets in our way too. So how do I know how you buy? Ask. Leslie, how do you make decisions? Um, I'm pretty quick. Okay. I kind of know. So you're quick at making decisions. So if we had to make some kind of decision today, you can tell me a yes or a no? Mm-hmm. As long as nobody else has to weigh in on that. Okay. So what we're talking about today, does anybody else have to weigh in on it? Probably my husband. Probably your husband. So should we just get him here today too? Uh, it's probably a good idea, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just stop getting emotionally engaged and start asking the questions we have to. Oh, see, it looks so easy when you do it. (laughs) The other thing that you taught me, and I failed at a couple of times miserably, but now I am, I'm pretty good. Failure is key, is the upfront contract. Yes, upfront contract. (laughs) What is the upfront contract, Leslie? It is, it's the TOA, or TAO, Time Action. You want me to help you? Yes. (laughs) So upfront contract is really time agenda outcome. Oh, yeah. Uh, something that, you know, it's not, it's nothing that I've invented, right? Um, but Sandler, we, we lean on it really hard because it's a little bit more than time agenda outcome. It's really setting the expectations of not having miscommunication. So you and I were going to sit here and talk today, right? Um, you know exactly, we know how much time we're going to spend together. Um, you know that you're going to ask me a lot of questions. I know that I'm going to answer a lot. Probably going to ask you a few too. And the outcome of today is to actually come up with a resource that we can u- utilize for both myself and you and our viewers out there. That it's a tool and a resource. So it's really understanding what we're what we're coming to the table for, and there's no misconceptions between the two of us. And then you do it right up front, right? <clears throat> Absolutely. So when we say that, I guess that would <laughs> go along with the upfront contract. But it's nice because right when you get into the phone call, or I guess you would do it in the meeting. I would typically do it in the meeting, yes. But also when you talk about cold calls, you always tell me to tell them how much time you have up front. So I guess that's different. Totally different, but, yeah. 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 So, okay. So with that, you're actually supposed to tell someone hey, do you have 30 seconds that we can talk? So you, you do mention it, I guess. And this is so fun because I'm just regurgitating everything I've heard from her. <laughs> Aren't you so proud of me? I'm so proud. <laughs> what else do you want to know about sales? What do you think the viewers would need to hear about it? I think a huge component of the upfront contract feeds into the level playing field. What do we call that? Equal business status. Yes. That. Yeah. So oftentimes... As a salesperson, I'm calling and I feel like I'm way down here because I need you to give me the approval. But by doing the upfront contract, you create that equal business stature. Yeah. So, so oftentimes um, as salespeople, we feel like um, we should be, you know, overexcited or overprivileged that we're in your presence today. And I'm not saying don't appreciate it because absolutely appreciate your prospect's time. But the reality of it is, is that if, you know, my clients, CEOs, business owners, presidents of organizations, if they're setting aside any time for me at all, we're actually on equal business stature already because they have a problem or I don't know how many CEOs, presidents, or owners of companies that are just going to set aside 30 minutes just to have a chat. Right, so there's really a reason that they want me to be there, and it's our job as salespeople to uncover what those reasons are and how we set that, how we set the tone and set the pace right up front is by using an upfront contract. Um, Oftentimes in Sandler, we say it's the Willy Wonka's golden ticket um, of if there's one thing that you take away from any of our training sessions or any of our interactions, if you can utilize that upfront contract first, um, it changes the way you play the game changes the playing field. <clears throat> and I will say, I've tried it, and it does help. It feels so much more comfortable. Wait a minute, you've just tried it? Uh, I've failed at that miserably a few times, and I have successfully okay. conducted them several times. <laughs> it should become, it should be integrated into just part of what you do. I know, now it really okay. is. It's so Good. fun. Good. I wish I would have done that a few years ago. 
but it's so much more natural now. I know, right? Why? Mm-hmm. Why do you think it's more natural now? Practice. And? I don't know. Why. You're not as emotionally engaged anymore. Oh. That could be true. I also wonder, too, this will be a lot of transparency here, but so I used to own my own business as an image consultant, and that's how I enlisted Kelly's skills. And um, I think because maybe I didn't find my service as as worthy, of, you know, mm-hmm. I looked at it as more frivolous, even though my clients definitely didn't, thank God. Um, but to me, it was something that I took for granted. It came easy to me, and I just really enjoyed the helping people portion of it. Whereas now, I know how much you helped me, so I see a different worth there. So asking for things, it's much easier for me to say, well, I think we should charge for this program. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that just goes back to it, too. So another thing you know, that helps salespeople improve is really understanding their value. Right, so we talk about removing our head trash, um, utilizing the upfront contract to create equal business stature. But you're absolutely right. Um, you know, understanding what our belief is about money or the value of the service that we provide is really going to make you or break you. So I know that we worked on that a lot, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That it, money is a funny concept. It is. It is so strange. Everybody needs it, but you're not supposed to want it. And I'm not sure why. We just talk about it. That's how you get it out of the way. You talk about it first, up front, and feel confident about it. Because you're there for a reason. You have the meeting, you're in somebody's office for a reason. Your job is to figure out why. Why would they buy? Okay, so let's do a pretend scenario. And Is that okay? Yeah, what do you want to do? I don't know. Um, I'll get me to buy something from you. And how do you want me to do that? What do you, what skill do you want me to show? The Just say like we're in the first meeting. Like get me to do another meeting or something. We're in the first meeting and we came to the first meeting for why. So you're a business owner, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. And you have a sales team that isn't performing as well? Yes. Okay. And you have a sales team that's not performing as well and you want to give them skills. Mm-hmm. I you want, want to them. create a sales process. Yeah, I want to flip that. However they're operating they're doing it like I was, which was they're intimidated. They don't feel like their product is really worth them going out on a limb. Okay. Those kind of things. Okay. So what tool do you want me to display today? Like upfront contracting when we show how to... Yeah, use? like do the whole first meeting. Okay. Maybe. The whole first meeting. Okay. So you're the client or you're the prospect, right? Yeah. And I'm the salesperson. Mm-hmm. Leslie, nice to meet you. Kelly Ambrioli. Nice to meet you too. Um, so we still have an hour today. Uh, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Now, you looked a little unsure about that. Is an hour still good? Yeah, I think we could probably do about 45 minutes. Is that okay with you? Okay, so 45 minutes is about the cap for me to really have a conversation with you. So as long as you can commit to 45 minutes, I think it's okay. Okay, right. sure. Mm-hmm. So help me understand. I called you probably a week ago, right? And when I called you, you mentioned things like you would like to talk about um, you have a productive sales team, but they're just not growing fast enough. Um, the pipeline's not where you really want it to be. What else? What did I miss? Well, and then referrals. They're just, they don't even ask. And I don't know how to help them. Okay, so referrals. We'll talk about that today, too. Okay, so if everything went perfect today, what would today look like? How would our meeting go? Um, I guess I would like to know how you could help us, really. Okay, okay. Um, so in order to figure that out, I'm probably going to have to ask you a lot of questions. Is that okay? Sure. And if at any time you have any questions for me, you're going to, we'll just, you'll just stop me and ask me? Sure. Okay. And at the end of today, we're just going to decide what we're going to do going forward from here. Whether we're going to either good. assess your team and go forward, or if we're just going to shake, for, uh, shake hands and part as friends. Sound fair? Sure. Okay. Yes. So Leslie, a couple of things that I would ask you first would be... When you say, if I can help you, what does that look like? What does help look like to you? Well, first of all, they don't want to make cold calls. Mm -hmm. So I cannot get them on the phone. They really aren't into networking. They're used to being here. 
and they have their typical jobs that they have to follow up on. And so getting them out to generate more sales is just not happening. But then referrals aren't coming in either. So really we're kind of stagnant. So if we lose one of our clients, we're toast. Okay. How many clients do you currently have? Let's say 75. Okay, 75. And if one of them go, you're in trouble? Yes. Yes. Okay. So... Tell me, what are you doing today to take care of the customers that you have? Well, I'm sure that all of us would love to say that we have all these processes in place that are running very smoothly. I will say that we've created the processes and we're trying. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say we we probably get 85% down path. Okay, is 85% good or I'm not happy with that, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, how long has this been going on? I'd probably say the last three years, and I can't take it anymore. So when you say you can't take it anymore, does that mean you've tried other things to fix it? I mean, I've worked with them personally. Okay. Yeah. When you, when you say you worked with them, what do, help me understand what does that mean? Um, well, I try to give them encouragement. I try to give them pep talks. We talk about, um... We talk about how to reach out to them, and we have the, you know, the procedure Mm -hmm. or the process. So I just reinstate that. And how's that working? Well, I guess not very well. Okay, not very well. Are you just fed up? You're just done trying, or are you still looking for a solution? I guess I'm done personally trying. So I'm looking for someone else to come in and help. Okay. That's why I'm here, I assume, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So how much do you think that you're at risk of losing today? Well, I would guess that in referrals, we're probably down 40% from where we could be. And I would say in generating new leads, we're stagnant. So we have our entire business on the line Okay. in reality brought referrals up a couple times. Tell me why. Well, I know that those are already clients that we've, they're already buying from us. So I feel like we should be able to either, you know, get more word of mouth or um, I, I just feel like there should be some way where we could ask them and they would give us their names of people that we could contact for more of a warm lead rather than a cold yeah. lead. So referrals are really kind of important, the foundation of your business, maybe? Yes. Okay. So I think we're going to stop role play because we've went down the whole pain (laughs) funnel. So we've given you you a couple techniques there. We've given you an upfront contract, right? And we went down almost the entire pain funnel. So that's where I would really spend the next, you know, 40 minutes or so that we have left going into why me, um, how much have you budgeted. When you think of this, I'd I'd go into more pain by numbers, um, other techniques that we train. Um, but it was really important to watch that shift of who was talking the most, right? Was the salesperson talking more or was the prospect speaking more? And it should have been you Mm -hmm. when you review the tape or you watch the, watch this, right? It should have been you, um, and me just asking questions. So those are some of the techniques that we train and that are really uncomfortable for salespeople, um, because you gave me a lot of things, and most salespeople would just jump on them, like, right, oh, I can fix that, I can fix that. And what if I trained your people? Oh, yeah. And I was just digging for information. I'm just really kind of digging to understand what your needs are. Um, I forgot completely about when you ask, um, what have you done to fix this? Like, how? what's on the line, and then what have you done to fix this? I forgot about those. I just did it to you. Right? I know, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but out of role play now, you know, referrals is one thing that you wanted to talk about mm-hmm. today is how to, how to really ask for them because so many of us um, entrepreneurs, we build our business on referrals. I mean, if we have to stop making cold calls, yes, I train cold calling, I train networking, um, I talk about all of those, or we as a team coach and, and talk about all of that, um, but we all really want to get to the point where we're getting referrals and that our business is based on referrals. So... My tip for everyone in sales or entrepreneurs is ask for them now and ask for them often. So when you think of referrals, um, 
most of my clients say to me, you know, hey, Kelly, I just, I just want to get more referrals. And the first thing I ask them is, so how many have you asked for? <laughs> We're like, and then... <laughs> none. Believe it or not, none is the answer. I've never asked for referrals. So um, we cannot get what we don't ask for. I think we were all taught that, or at least I was taught that as a child. And yet we grow up and we don't ask for referrals ever. So ask for them now. Ask for them often. So put a number to it. Um, all of us sales professionals and entrepreneurs out there, we should be measuring ourselves and holding ourselves accountable. So write down a number. Um, as you're watching this, my number is two a week, for example. I have to ask for two a week. And if I get to the end of the week, which is Friday, right, and I haven't asked for two, I need to pick up the phone and go, hey, Leslie, guess what? I didn't ask for referrals, so I'm calling you. And who do you know? Who do you know that should be in my world or whose world should I be in? Um, and that's is simply how you do it. It doesn't have to be this long, drawn-out thing. Um, but, yeah, ask for them now. Ask for them often. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming today. Yeah. How Thanks can people me. get a hold of you? So I'm going to tell you to do that dreaded thing that we all hate doing, um, especially since we have smartphones. But I'm going to ask you to actually pick up the phone and dial is the easiest way to get a hold of me. And I know you're committed. So there's different ways you can get a hold of me. But I'm going to ask you to pick up the phone and dial 260-515-1021. I'll answer. Um, if you don't call, you can text but that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Okay, wonderful. Committed people, motivated people will do that. Nobody likes accountability. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much again. Absolutely. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you will watch the entire video as well as upcoming and previous.